Okay, so the second half of this unit concentrates on sort. Sorting is a fundamental operation, and understanding how we might approach this problem in the parallel world gives a lot of insight as to what works well and what doesn't work well on GPUs. There's a lot of neat algorithms in sorting, and I hope the rest of the unit gives you some new ideas about how to approach the design of efficient parallel algorithms. Now, Sort is a challenging problem on GPUs for several reasons. The first is that most sort algorithms are serial algorithms, or at least usually expressed in a serial fashion, particularly those you might have learned in an algorithms class. So all those nice algorithms that you learned in school are not necessarily applicable here, and we'll see this in a bit. The second is that for performance reasons, we prefer to look at algorithms, parallel algorithms, that coalesce memory accesses, that have little branch divergence among threads, and particularly that are able to keep the hardware busy by keeping lots of threads busy at the same time. So the sort of algorithms that you might have learned in an algorithm course tend to be moving around little bits of memory at a time, and they have very branchy code, and they're not often very parallel. So we'd like to take a look at algorithms that have the other characteristics, that can keep the hardware busy, that do limit branch divergence, that do prefer coalesced memory accesses. And so what we're going to do is look at some classic sorting algorithms and discuss how they might map onto a parallel world. We'll start with one of the simplest algorithms, and one that maps nicely to a parallel implementation, odd-even sort, also known as brick sort. If you're familiar with the serial algorithm called bubble sort, this is the parallel version of bubble sort. So we're going to start by putting all of our elements to sort in a row. And then we're going to mark all the even elements as black and all the odd elements as red. Now, an odd-even sort in the first phase, each red element looks down the line to the left toward the left end and pairs up with the black elements it's facing. Now, if that pair is out of order, they swap places and colors as well. Otherwise, they stay in the same places. Now, every red element turns around, faces to its right, and pairs up with the black element in the other direction. Again, they swap if they're out of order. So we continue until the sequence is sorted. So let's try an example. So just to show this with some real numbers, we'll try a sample with these five numbers. We start by pairing them up, starting at the left, and we swap each pair if they're out of order. Then we pair them with the opposite polarity and continue the process. We return to pairing them the way that we did in the first step and continue to pair them one way, then the other way, then one way, then the other way. And so we finally conclude with a sorted sequence. So it's very important that we understand how to measure the step and work complexity of these algorithms because that's often the dominant factor in their runtime. So for this algorithm, what is the step complexity of this algorithm? Order of 1, log n, n, n log n, or n squared, the number of steps. And what is the total amount of work that we need to do with the same choices? Please check your choice.